Good afternoon. <clears throat> Just try again. Good afternoon. Welcome to my broadcast. This is episode number 995. Yes, five days to go. Hmm, yes, yeah, getting interesting. Um, today's topic is about being real, simply put. Hang on. Oof. Sorry, my, I twisted my back this morning and I'm just adjusting slightly. Fun to experience that. Actually, that's kind of one of the things I want to talk about in a way. Very, very, <laughs> very sideways, actually, which is about being real. Um, we have a presumption in this culture, particularly the Western, well, I wouldn't just say LA, but certainly the Western world about you've got to put on a brave face and pretend everything's okay. And me just admitting there about my back is just reminding me that the fact that it's not about trying to be okay all the time, it's about being real. And so many people are crying out for real relationship, real love. They're so tired of the plastic, pretend, fake relationship stuff out there. And, and I just posted a meme this morning, um, or actually I posted a quote, I guess, that I wrote about five years ago about Tinder and the other, all the dating apps and how people want real relationship. And most of the aids to relationships, the dating apps, for example, are rarely about reality. They're really about being real. They're actually more about the, the um, perfect packaging to look the right way, to be the certain thing, to put the right words in. And, and some of the stuff I know, I, mean, and I know within the midst of all that, just to be honest, Real love does happen, but generally speaking, as a general rule, the majority of people, it doesn't happen. There's too much, um, <laughs> say, fakery going around. There's some people who are caught up in the paradigm of trying to look perfect and get it done right, and they don't show their real selves to each other. It's so interesting to watch how people don't take relationship that seriously. And I mean it from the point of view is that we put a lot of effort and time into getting the right job. We go for a college degree, we study, we learn, we go for academic, we go for academic tools, teachings, trainings, to become better at the job we want to do. And yet, when it comes to relationships, we don't put so much effort in. And it was puzzled me why relationship is, and, and I got some ideas, by the way, but it puzzled me for a long time why a relationship was always something that was just um, haphazard and convenient. It was never really like invested in as an energetic. In fact, most time people only go seek counseling when they're having trouble in the relationship, like marriage counseling. But people don't usually prepare for a relationship with that sort of effect or that sort of plan in place, which is kind of interesting to watch. So, you know, if you're gonna be a, you're gonna be a sports participant, you will learn from videos or a person teaching you or a coach how to be better at the sport, especially if you're gonna be professional or be an Olympic comp competitor. So for all these different things like sports, like a job, like most things, we don't do things usually blindly. We do a little research and learn how to do things, get some help, get some expert advice from somebody. When it comes to relationship, that seems to be ignored. And I sometimes wonder why people complain about, well, excuse me, no, no, I'll say it, I'll be nice, I'll be nice. <laughs> I sometimes wonder how relationships even do work when the fact is people don't have much skill set to start with. Most relationships in the planet, now a lot of you who follow me know better than this, but a lot of people on the planet Go into a relationship with no skills whatsoever, except by the, what they've seen on TV and some soap operas, some perhaps experience from their family, and that's about it. And you wonder why the divorce rate is 50%? Yeah, we've got some issues to work out here. So the topic I threw to is being real, and I want to talk about, talk about real, being real up front, to start being real from the get-go before you get into a relationship. Because I'm aware, more often than not, the people don't um, stop and become aware of what they've done. In fact, I was thinking of somebody just now who was on their fourth marriage and they're younger than me. <laughs> Not that I should compare anything, but the fact is that there's a lot of people who are caught up in the paradigm where, well, if it didn't work, let's do it again differently. Different person would be fine. Now, if you fall into that trap, which a lot of people do, I'm going to suggest that maybe take a different path, a different tools of action. Because to just simply swap out a bad partner for a good partner isn't the solution because nine times out of ten, it ain't, it ain't the partner who's, who's got the bad or good about them. It's your interaction with them. Yes, you're responsible for this. Oh, sorry to burst your bubble. But this is the truth about this sort of work, is that relationships are presumed to work without any effort, any investment, any um, learning, which is why so many fail. I believe, frankly, if people took the time before they went into a relationship to learn about how to be in a relationship, before they even met somebody, so they could do it before they even made the choice. 
so they can choose from a much, conscious, much more conscious place. Interesting. Okay. What came up right away before I was going to say what I was going to say was that there'd be probably less people in a relationship right now. Just being a happy, effective, well-adjusted single person takes a bit of work and practice and guidance to do that. So to be in a relationship adds to that or compounds that opportunity and that challenge. So just dive into a relationship and hope it all works out because you have the right genitalia you need for the partnership isn't enough to base it on, I'm afraid. And you may discover why relationships don't last as long as they used to because people tend to get bored with if that's all there is going on. Making time, choosing to make yourself a priority, choosing to get support, guidance, counsel, advice, coaching from somebody who may give you some better advice than you have for yourself so you've been more prepared for a relationship it's something people haven't made the choice to do but I recommend it as a wise choice nowadays there's too many options out there to just dive into a relationship without any um, test driving shall we say you know it's like perhaps it'd be better if we took the time to invest in ourselves take the time to invest in who we are invest in what we're about and investing in it to know who we are so when you make a choice about a relationship, it comes from a much more educated, aware, and awakened place. Because when you do that, your relationship choices, your relationship opportunities, your relationship chances are greatly improved. But you've got to be willing to do the work. And for most people, to actually choose to seek out guidance when they're single is so far beyond their comprehension and beyond their willingness, they'd rather go through and repeat mistake after mistake and be in relationship after relationship where it doesn't work out. Now, it may last 10 years and it doesn't work out. Maybe there's kids involved, it doesn't work out. Ideally, you, you learn the lesson in the first few, six, few months, you don't waste too much time, and you don't end up with a lot of responsibilities after the relationship that you end up having to carry along after the relationship. Now, I'm being brutal about that because some people need to hear it that way. Obviously, when you're in a relationship and you have kids, there's a responsibility there, and ideally, you handle them with a certain level of accountability, responsibility, and ownership of your role in that. But at the same time, relationship is absolutely um, what's I'm looking for a relationship is a great place to practice but it's a good choice to know what you're practicing before you get into it relationships are interesting in so many ways I mean I've done 990 plus broadcasts about relationships so there's a lot to talk about <laughs> to be true but at the same time the understanding is that we have this opportunity before we get into a relationship to maybe get some more skills, some more tools, some more understanding to make us a better partnership. Now, I was actually reading an article today about um, sexual interplay that is a thing that would help, would help anybody who reads it become a better partner on that level. But then there's all the other levels like emotional maturity, emotional well-being, emotional mastery, how to be better in relationships so your emotions are in a better place to be handled so you can be more transparent, more real, as I said in the title, and more authentic with your partner rather than having your emotions so suppressed ignored and and, and ignored suppressed ignored I say three of the, I think I'm being ignored twice if your emotions are not not aligned to who you are and you're not aligned to your emotions it can be very challenging if they start shop unbidden and out of control learning how to be a better partner starts when you're single learning how to be a better um, Participant in a relationship, that's a good word. It's like maybe participate in a sport, you want to learn how to do it right. You want to participate in a business, you want to learn how to do that right. When you want to learn how to participate in a relationship, maybe you want to learn how to do that one right as well. I'm making this kind of interest, well, simplistic um, comparison because that's the thing we forget. Is that relationships, generally speaking, require some level of skill. Now, I don't mean being a um, skillful lover that's not what I'm talking about though that doesn't hurt <laughs> I'm speaking about how, being, how, how to be a skillful partner which is the whole shebang the whole piece so if you haven't already gotten help guidance support taken workshops and other things this is a good time to think about starting I'm grateful I've been very immersed in this journey for a long time I think I'm a better partner than I was before I, actually I know I am I haven't had a chance to practice it much because I've chosen to be single because I'm focusing on my career and my business because that's my priority and I said that before in other talks, explaining about purpose before relationship 
is a key thing for the masculine hearted man to do. So in case that didn't reach you before, now you get that one too. But if you're looking for getting more guidance, I do invite you to reach out to me to have some support. I have quite a bit of resource to give you some guidance, support, counseling, coaching, wisdom, lessons, mistakes I've made that you can learn from, etc., etc. So I can help you with that sort of stuff. So I invite you to reach out to me. Another thing you're going to remind you of is about loving yourself. I keep talking about this every single time, but it's an adamant piece of my work. People keep looking at relationship as the place where they're going to go to feel loved. It's an errant approach. It really does start with loving yourself first. One of my key elements to teach my clients is everyone to look in the mirror and love themselves properly. In fact, I created a self-love guided meditation to do just that. So you don't have to, look, don't have to come work with me to do that. You can do it with this audio, um, AM, these audio meditations I created to help you really learn how to love yourself. This will help you be more effective in relationship as well because when you love yourself first, love yourself fully, you become more wholehearted in relationship. It's a powerful place to be. So I'll put a link to that in the comments. But if you do want to know how to be in a better partner in a relationship and you're single right now, it's the best time to get some help. If you want to do that, reach out to me over social media, message me and I'll give you some more suggestions and some next steps that you can find out more to work with me. Um, my passion is helping people learn to love themselves first. They can love themselves better in a relationship. And that's why I do these talks every day. If you haven't seen my broadcast, this is every day, seven days a week I do this. At least for another five days, we'll see what happens after that because I'll be hitting my thousandth broadcast next week. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily practice, my daily discipline, my daily meditation in a way to share, to inspire, and to evoke. So you can join me every day of the week, seven days a week usually, uh, here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, there's a whole bunch of replays available. And I have saved all my replays onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Please like my page. Um, but Facebook doesn't show them all. Facebook's kind of notorious for not showing the last, like, which shows about two or three hundred maybe, and I suppose you'll see. However, I do have a backup plan, which is my YouTube channel, although Facebook's been annoying about that too. But if you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, please subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, where all my broadcasts get loaded, except for the last two days. Facebook stopped letting me download them a couple of days ago, and I'm working on getting it back. Hopefully today it'll work. We'll see. But anyway, right now you can get all my broadcasts except for the last couple of days available right there. You can search through by titles, scan through from what you're looking for. And then for the last few, go to my business page because they're the ones you definitely can find on my business page on Facebook. Either way, you can find my talks, get some help, and seek out guidance. I recommend my self-love meditation. It will help you get more self-support, self-reliance, and self-awareness so you'll be more loving towards any partner you join in with. And uh, put yourself first. If you're single, a good time to do this. Because being in a relationship can sometimes be challenging to do this work because you have this inertia of the relationship. That's a whole other topic. So with that, I thank you for watching. Appreciate you being with me as always. I'll see you again same time, same time tomorrow, same place. And as a reminder, and as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.